All right, so let's go over this together. Hopefully you've already attempted the first problems on your own, and if you've got one through eight correct, then you will be able to get a ticket. So we've got the seating chart, and there's 20 students in this class. And so these codes, not codes, but these um, functions tell us the instructions. So L of X means the student who sits to the left of, R of X is to the right of, B of X is behind, F of X is in front, and Y of X is who's at the very front row. Okay, so if you don't have this filled out or you were super confused, you can pause the video after we do this first one and see if you can get the rest of them. So let's look at number one. This would say L of Quincy. Well, L of X means the student who sits directly to the left of X. And Quincy is our X because he's in the parentheses. So we need to look at the seating chart and figure out who's left of Quincy. So here's Quincy. The left of Quincy would be Paul. So you'd go through the rest of these using those functions to figure out who is like to the left, right, front, behind, etc. So if you haven't filled that out, go ahead and pause the video and do that, and then we'll go over it together. Okay, so let's go over this. Um, R of Missy means right of Missy. So right of Missy would be Nancy. Behind Bob is Gary. Y of Oscar. So remember Y is the student who sits at the front row of that person's row. So we're looking at who is the person in the front row of Oscar's row. Well, here's Oscar, and the person at the very front of that would be Ernie. Because Ernie's at the front of Oscar's row. Then, right of Clara is Dave. The front of Tara would be Rob. And then front of Bob. So is there anybody in front of Bob? No. So that would actually be undefined. If you just said none or something, that's fine too. And then Y of Dave. So since Dave is actually the front person of his row, he would actually equal himself because he is the person who sits in the front row of his row. All right, so if you got those right, you can get a ticket. Good job. Now let's move on to number nine. Which students would not be in the domain of f of x? So remember that domain is your x value. So we're looking at all of the people because x is our people or our students. And we want to know who would not be in the domain of f of x. And remember, f of x means in front of. So we need to figure out what students do not have somebody in front of them. So that would have to be the front row people because there's nobody in front of them. So that would be Alice, Bob, Clara, Dave, and Ernie. Or you could have just said the front row people if you don't want to wrap them all out. Which students would not be in the domain of L of X? So L of X is to the left of. So what students would not be in the domain of the left of? So basically, what students do not have anybody to the left of them? Well, it'd have to be this row, Alice, Frank, and Caitlin, because there's nobody to the left of them. If I said, find who is to the left of Alice, that would be undefined because there's nobody to the left of Alice. So I would write Alice, Frank, and Caitlin. So now we're actually going backwards on this one, on number 11. If L of X equals Harry, then who does X equal? So this time we don't know what the input is. We don't know the domain. We know the output or the range. I know that Harry was left of somebody. 
So who was that person? So basically you're working backwards. So let's come back up here and look. Here's Harry, and he was left of somebody. So who was he left of? Well, he would have had to have been left of Isaac. So I want you to pause the video again and try number um, 12, 13, and 14 on your own. And then if you get those right, you can get a ticket as well. Okay, let's go over these. So number 12, front of somebody, or er, f of x equals Lori. So we're trying to figure out, well, who was that person? So Lori is in front of somebody. So here's Lori, and she's in front of Paul. And you can check it. Plug Paul back in and make sure that the person in front of Paul is Lori. And it is. Okay, the next one. B of X equals Rob. So Rob is behind somebody. Who is that somebody? So let's figure out where Rob is. Here's Rob, and he's behind Nancy. And then finally, if Y of X is Alex or is Alice, then what would X be? So we know Alice is the front row, so who could X be? Well, remember the front row is just the person who sits at the very front. So here's Alice. She could be the front row of herself. She's also the first person in the row of Frank, and then she's also the first person. Yes, I just said first person instead of first person. Sorry. Alice would be the first person in Caitlin's row. So, all three of those people could be a possible X. Alice, Frank, and Caitlin. So, if you got those, you can get a ticket. Good job. Moving on to the back. So, the first page was just function notation. Um, it was finding an input, or plugging in an input, looking for the output, or going backwards, okay? Now we're actually going to start doing what's called compositions. We're going to be putting two different functions together. So on the back, all of our rules are still the same, like left of, right of, behind, and front, or front row. But we're going to combine these two together. So let's take a look at number 15. You always want to start with the most inward parentheses. So Clara is where we're starting, and then we're going to look at what's closest to her. So the B is closest, and then the L is on the outside. You always start um, closest to the parentheses and then work your way out. So Clara is my X, so I'm going to circle Clara. And then we need to find out who's behind Clara because that's the first thing we need to do. So who's behind Clara? That would be Harry. And then we're looking at who's to the left of Harry, and that would be Gary. So you're doing two different steps. We started with Clara, we went behind Clara to Harry, and then we had to go left of Harry to get Gary. That's not confusing at all. Let's try the next one. So, Missy is who we're starting with. We need to go in front of Missy, should be Harry again. And then to the right of Harry, should be Isaac. Okay, so pause the video. Do 17 through 20. I'm trying to give you lots of ticket opportunities here. And then we'll go over it together to see if you got it right. Okay, start with 17. We are going to start with Bob. So here is Bob. We need to go behind Bob, which is Gary. And then who's behind Gary would be Lori. Okay. 
Number 18, Oscar. We need to go in front of Oscar, which would be Jin. And then in front of that would be Ernie. Number 19, left of Oscar is Nancy. And then behind Nancy is Rob. Okay, then last one. We're starting with Oscar again. We need to go behind Oscar. Well, there's nobody behind him. So, since there's nobody behind him, we can't go to the left of them. So this one's actually gonna be undefined. That one's a little bit tricky. Okay, since there's nobody behind Oscar, you have to stop there, which would be undefined. Okay, if you got those, you can get a ticket. Moving on to 21. Solve the equation, rad of rad of x equals Nancy. So basically we're working backwards on this one. We gotta figure out what's the original input. Who is the person we would be starting with? We know Nancy is to the right and to the right of this person. So you're basically going backwards and figuring out, well, who is to the left, to the left of Nancy? So let's start with Nancy. Nancy is to the right and to the right of this person. So that would have to be Lori. Because if I put Lori in parentheses, Let's check and make sure that she would equal Nancy. So if we go to the right of Lori, we would get Missy, and then to the right of Missy would be Nancy. Okay, moving on, 22. Solve the equation to the front of, to the left of X is Bob. So we gotta figure out who Bob is in front of, or let's, let me rephrase that. Bob is in the front and then to the left of this person. So we're going to actually go backwards and we're going to go behind and then to the right of Bob. So here's Bob. We need to first go behind Bob to get Gary and then to the right to get Harry. So let's check it. If I go to the front and to the left of Harry, let's check if it equals Bob. So who's to the left of Harry? That would be Gary. And then who's in front of Gary? And that would be Bob. So we did it correctly. Okay. The last one, and we'll be done with this. So we need to figure out who's in front of and then behind Paul. So here's Paul, who's in front of Paul, Lori, and then who's behind Lori? Well, it'd be Paul. Okay, I want you to do the next two. Who's, who's in front and then behind Jen, or who's behind Jen and then in front of Jen? And then who's behind Dave and then in front of Dave? you should notice that they end up equaling themselves because you're going behind them but then going in front of them. So make a general statement about the values of any expression of the form to the front to the back of X. So basically your input equaled your output, right? We inputted Paul and we got an output of Paul. So the input equaled the output. Or you could say that f of x equaled x. Whenever we inputted x, we got it back out. So last one, for which students would this generalization not be true? So who could you not go behind? 
because that's your first operation would be to go behind them. So what students could you not go behind? Well, that would have to be all the people in the last row who don't have anybody behind them. So Caitlin, Scott, Quincy, Tara, and Oscar. Because there's nobody to go behind them, so you'd have to stop there. So you could write those out or just say people in the very last row. Or, yeah, that would work. People in the last row. Because there's nobody behind them. Maybe I should make a seating chart and make y'all find where you're sitting based off of these rules, these functions. All right, so that's it for that engage. You can go ahead and put that to the side. And now we're going to start on our notes. Today's notes are 1.7, compositions of functions. Okay, so go ahead and take a few seconds to write that down and then turn to your first page of notes. So this is how we write compositions of functions and this is the notation for it. So this is pronounced as f of g of x. That's what this little symbol means is of. It can also be written as f of g of x, so you pronounce it the same way, but instead of using this symbol, you can write it like this with just parentheses. So it'd be f, parentheses, g, parentheses, x, and then double parentheses. And something to keep in mind is that you always start closest to x, or whatever your input is. Okay, hey, on your IXL today, you're only going to be doing problems like A and B, but then tomorrow you're going to do a paper um, that has these other examples on there. So just heads up, today on your IXL, you're only going to do some easy examples like A and B, but the other ones are coming on the paper you're going to do on Friday. Okay, so I'm going to use two different colors, one for F equation and one for the G equation. If you want to do the same thing as well, you can. So A says find f of g of 2. And you can leave it like that, or if you prefer, you could write it like this. F, whoops, let me change the color. F parenthesis g parenthesis 2, and then double parentheses. Either way, it's the exact same thing, so just heads up. But you're going to see it both ways, just make sure you understand that it's the exact same thing. So we're going to start with the g equation because it's closest to the x, or to the input. So I'm going to input a 2 into the g equation for x. So I would write this as g of 2 equals, and everywhere I see an x in the g equation, I'm replacing it with a 2. So that would equal 2 squared plus 2. Well, 2 squared is 4, and then 4 plus 2 is 6, so this would equal 6. But I can't stop there. I have to take that answer and plug it into the f equation. So now I'm going to take the 6 and plug it into the f equation. So I would have f of 6 equals 4 times 6 minus 3. I'm taking this answer I just got and putting it in place of the x in the f equation. Well, 4 times 6 is 24, and then 24 minus 3 would be 21. So that's what our answer would be. 
would be 21. Okay, let's do another example. So on B, it says find f of g of negative 1. So once again, I'm going to start with the g equation because it's closest to the negative 1. So I'm going to plug negative 1 into the g equation. So that would become negative 1 squared plus 2. Remember, always put um, negatives in parentheses whenever you're squaring them or else it's going to throw your answer off. So negative 1 squared is positive 1, and then positive 1 plus 2 is 3. But I can't stop there. I have to take that and plug that into the f equation. So now I'm going to input a 3 into the f equation. So I'd get 4 times 3 minus 3. Well, 4 times 3 is 12, and 12 minus 3 is 9. Okay, so now let's move on here down to these other examples. This time we're going to switch it up, so let me write it because I like this format better. G of f of 2a. So this time we're starting with the f equation first. So I'm going to use my purple because I'm going to do my f equation. So I'm inputting 2a into the place of x in the f equation. So I'd have 4 times 2a minus 3. So we actually can't get a specific number, but we could go ahead and simplify this because I know that 4 times 2a would be 8a, and then I have minus 3 on the end of it. So we're going to have to leave it just like that because I don't know what a equals, so I can actually solve it. But I can't stop there. I need to plug that into the g equation now. So I'm going to plug in this whole expression into the g equation. Oops, it's supposed to be minus. So I'm going to input 8 minus or 8a minus 3 into the g equation, which would be 8a minus 3 squared and then plus 2. So we're actually going to go ahead and simplify this. Remember, if you square a binomial, you actually have to multiply it out. So I'm going to do that on some other paper because, or let me just come over here and do that because I wrote too big. So remember, this is 8a minus 3 squared plus 2. So I need to start here and multiply 8a minus 3 out. So you could distribute it out or draw a box if you need to. I'm just going to distribute it. So 8a times 8a is 64a squared. And then 8a times negative 3 is negative 24a. And then I would have negative 3 times 8a, which would be negative 24a. And then the last ones, negative 3 times negative 3 would be positive 9. So this would turn into 64a squared. Then I would combine these together, negative 24a plus negative 24a, which would give me negative 48a, and then plus 9. Okay, that was just whenever I multiplied that out. But I still have this plus 2 on the end of it. So I need to go ahead and add that on. So my final answer would be 64a squared minus 48a and then 9 plus 2 would give me 11. So see how that one just went up a little bit more in the difficulty. So I'm going to go ahead and write that back over here that this would equal 64a squared minus 48 a plus 11. Okay, now let's go ahead and move on to this one. So I have g of f of x plus 1. So I need to start with the f equation again. So I'm going to plug in x plus 1 in place of x. 
So that would become 4 times x plus 1 minus 3. So I need to distribute out this 4. So this would become 4x plus 4 minus 3, which would equal 4x plus 1. Okay, but I can't stop there. I need to take the 4x plus 1 and plug it into the g equation. So I'm going to input 4x plus 1 into the g equation. So I'd have 4x plus 1, and then that's all squared, and then plus 2 on the outside of that. Okay, once again, we need to multiply this out. So if we were to multiply out 4x plus 1 squared, do that right here. Like I said, if you need to draw a box, you can draw a box or just distribute it. 4 times 4 is 16x squared. 4 times 1, or 4x times 1 is 4x. 1 times 4x is 4x. And then 1 times 1 is positive 1. So this would equal 16x squared plus 4x plus 4x is 8x and then plus 1. Okay, but remember, back up here we saw this plus 2 on the outside of that. So I need to go ahead and add on that 2. And then whenever I simplify all of this, I would get 16x squared plus 8x plus 3. Okay, let's go ahead and stop there, and then that way you'll have some time to do your IXL possibly. Um, we're going to pick up on these notes tomorrow, and then you can start that other paper. So if you have any questions, please let me know. Hope you guys have a great day. Bye.